Welcome to the Emerging Voice Broadcast, bringing you a fresh word that will change your life and impact your city. Tonight's host, Pastor Marco Jacobs, Senior Pastor of El Battle Fellowship. And now, the Emerging Voice. Welcome to the Emerging Voice. This is your host, Pastor Marco Jacobs from El Bethel Fellowship. With me in studio, I have my pastor friends. They will introduce themselves to you right now. Good evening, listeners. This is Pastor Brandon Bailey from Telios in Crown Gardens, Johannesburg. Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor Paul Gonzalez. Always excited about our Fire Friday shows. You're on the Emerging yeah. Voice. Now, listeners, if you've been with us since Monday, you'll know we have been speaking on the subject spiritual maturity. So we know that there are signs of spiritual maturity and there are signs of spiritual immaturity. This night, we want to focus a little more on leadership, the maturity factors and also the immaturity mm. factors. I'm going to ask Pastor Paul to kick off with just explaining to us immaturity factors in a spiritual leader. Well, the example I can think of immediately is when the pastor tries to settle personal scores from the sure. pulpit because he can't have private conversations with those that may have offended him. Mm. That's interesting, Pastor Paul, because the danger of that is now 500 people will be yeah. oppressed because of five people that have offended the pastor. And at the end of the day, you do people an injustice because people come to church to really be refreshed, to really be encouraged, to really be challenged. But because you cannot have that private conversation with the people that have offended you, you now take it to the pulpit. Mm. And let me say people stop trusting you when you do that regularly. Mm. I think there's already a fundamental issue there. Before you got to the pulpit, you got yourself offended and offense is already a sign mm. of immaturity. Right there. Yeah. And so that means that you as a leader cannot deal with your issues. So if you cannot deal with your issues, how do you teach people to deal with their issues? And how would you feel if your people went up during offering and settled scores with you? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the pulpit is really a sacred place. It's a place where we edify, exhort and comfort. It is important that we get the word right, we get the message right, and we don't push our own agenda from the pulpit. The one thing that contaminates the word of God is agenda. Yeah. That is the one thing that contaminates the word of God because at the end of the day, we find that we have to dig the word to hear what God is saying to his people. But because we are so clogged up with our own issues, we say to them what we want them to hear. Mm. Well, another sign of spiritual immaturity for me is when pastors make it a ministry to attack other pastors, especially growing churches. Sure. You know, I think that there's this inaccurate um, level of thinking that says when the ministry is a little too big or for us in terms of how we would interpret things, we would start saying, no, that's a compromised ministry. They must be watering down the gospel because mm. how can you grow a church that size? And you were preaching a full gospel. Well, I want to go back to one of the scriptures we visited in the week, Ephesians 4.13. It mm. says we have to move rhythmically and easy with one another. This speaks about senior level mm. relationship. At the end of the day, when you see growth as an offense to you, you are immature. Because at the end of the day, you have to rejoice with them that are moving ahead of you. And what we forget at the end of the day is that those that got there before us can, can teach us, can help us to get to that place. Yeah. We also spoke about the... The jealousy factor, you know, mm. that we become jealous of one another. And, and the reality is, let's, let's be real. When you start speaking against another ministry, perhaps there's something in them that you want. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, no matter how deep or how much you code jealousy, the core is still bitterness. Yeah. And people get that. You can throw scriptures out there. You can pretend to be holier than the next church. But at the end of the day, people can discern when you do that consistently. It means mm. that you're really just angry because... It God's doing in another church what he's not doing in your church. Yeah. Perhaps it's that spirit of jealousy that's keeping that growth yeah. back. Well, bitterness at the end of the day evolves into a self-righteous spirit. Oh, and so wow. what you do at the end of the day, Pastor Paul, is you try to look right or appear right mm. in the presence of the people by making somebody else look back. Bad. Now, if we can only see how good you are because you've amplified somebody else's weakness, then you sure. are really immature. You know, I don't think Christ is going to ask you when you get to heaven, um, tell me what did so-and-so not do. He's mm. going to want to know what you did yeah you know pastor brandon your your point is relevant as well it's it's about the impression we create that there are levels of righteousness because i preach a certain type of message mm. i'm on a higher level of righteousness and you who are preaching this whatever it is that you're preaching i believe that i'm a lot better than you 
And we need to be careful and guard ourselves against that. Another sign of spiritual immaturity for me is when pastors' churches have grown a little bit and they become arrogant and think they're better than the rest. Mm. Well, the thing is this. If we understand the starting point of ministry, we'll always be cognizant of the fact that we need mm. one another. It's a general misconception to believe because somebody's smaller that he doesn't carry content, that he doesn't carry substance. Mm. And many times we try to value a person's substance based on the size of his church. Mm. That is immature because the number of people that follow you does not necessarily determine the content that you carry. At the end of the day, God anoints people everywhere all the time, but we must be cognizant of the fact that we can learn from one another. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, God is not only pushing mega numbers in our churches, He's pushing mega character in the man who is leading the ministry. Well, listeners, we know that you've been intrigued by what we've been saying so far. Stick with us. There's more to come after this ad break. Our Bethel Fellowship, discipling nations, equipping the saints, facilitating destiny, and releasing ministers. Senior pastors Marco and Cindy Jacobs invite you to a worship experience every Sunday morning, 9.30. Find us in Springfield, number 41, Marlboro Road. Join us for an inspiring, uplifting word. Our website, albethelfellowship.co.za. Telios is a vibrant kingdom community where the worship is unique and the word taught in simplicity. Join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. in Crown Gardens, Johannesburg on the corner of Shannon and Tilray Road with Pastor Brandon and Marilyn Bailey. For more information, dial 078-161-3034 or email info at telios.org.za. We are Telios, creating a kingdom culture. Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Gonzalez, and together with my wife, Pastor Leanne, we'd like to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for our exciting Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. at the Rock Church, Johannesburg. Dynamic praise, intimate worship, and an in-season life-changing word awaits you. We're at Mondial Recreation Center just off Columbine Street, or call us on 011 We're also on Facebook, Rock Church, Johannesburg, Church for the City, a word for the nation. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Leon James and together with my wife, Pastor Sherry Ann, would like to invite you to Royal Kingdom Ministries. We're a vibrant church located at Xavier Junction, number 5 Renter Street, Ormondi. Join Royal Kingdom Ministries every Sunday at 9 a.m. for authentic worship and a word that will change your life. You can find us on Facebook or contact us on 079-775-4293. Royal Kingdom Ministries, where you are royalty. Welcome back to the Emerging Voice Show. Listeners, just before the ad break, we went into some detail around spiritual immaturity in leaders, but we want to shift that a little bit. Pastors, let's speak about maturity, spiritual maturity in a leader. Yeah, one of the signs of spiritual maturity is when a pastor can truly celebrate with those that are more successful uh, than absolutely. himself. Absolutely. Uh, when, uh, when there's a member that drives a bigger car than the pastor, he's genuinely happy uh, yeah. for that person. Yeah. I believe in facilitating destiny. And mm. for me, facilitating destiny is helping you achieve what it is that you want to achieve in life. In me, just helping you get there. And if it is to get the big car that you speak about, then so be it. And without the want. You know, sometimes we, we bless when others are blessed because we expect the reward because they're progressing in life. Yeah. Well, it's people that drive ministry at the end of the day. If people are not at the core of why we preach, of why we do what we do, then at the end of the day, we, we shouldn't be preaching. We shouldn't be engaging people because... As you said, Pastor Paul, we celebrate people because mm. that is what drives mm. ministry. Mm. Yeah, another sign of spiritual maturity is when a pastor is able to release somebody when it's time for them to go. Yeah. I like the illustration someone once shared with me. He said that a spiritual leader is there to put you on his shoulder so that you can see a lot further mm. than what he was able to see. Yeah. And that means at the end of the day, we teach people how to hear God. We don't hear God on behalf of people because yeah. the veil has been torn and people now have access. I have an issue when we as leaders want to hear God on behalf of the people. Yeah. yeah. When a son gets to go and he's been released, 
peace by a spiritually mature father what a good foundation what a great testimony to be released into your new level or your new uh, life yeah i think the the mark of a great mature spiritual leader is that he can raise sons who have a direct relationship with god and he raise sons who can hear god and study the word for themselves so we create a situation where they are independent of him well pastor marco another mark of a spiritual mature leader is that he relates with other men of god mm. one of the challenges we have is we tend to isolate ourselves from others thinking that we god's little mm. special boy yeah. but a true leader understands that through relationship we maximize kingdom effectiveness and pastor be spiritual leaders seek out those relationships they don't necessarily wait for invitations because sometimes that's a mark of arrogance we expect that those that have smaller churches or less influence than you need to seek you out so true pastor paul because at the end of the day uh we must connect with one another mm-hmm. and we can't wait because we think we're special or oh, because your ego gets in the way and that's the thing because we have this philosophy if i'm bigger than you you're supposed to come to mm-hmm. me but at the same time you can have the small leader feeling inferior not reaching out to a bigger guy mm-hmm. so he must also be mature in his understanding yeah. yeah i think that a good spiritual leader mature spiritual leader grants access oh, you okay. know because he obviously has something to impart you didn't be, you didn't get to where you are with nothing to offer anyone else so the young emerging guys are looking for something that you are perhaps able to impart and they can perhaps impart into your life i also think another sign of a spiritual mature leader is when he feels like he has nothing to prove Mm. is there to serve and to serve effectively but mm. doesn't feel like he needs to make a point to anybody yeah. and this is the difference between being impressionable and actually understanding the dynamics of impact because mm. many a times we are more impressionable than understanding the dynamics of impact god called us to make an impact not to impress one another yeah. and when we understand impact we evolve into higher levels of maturity another sign of spiritual maturity for me is when a pastor can celebrate another pastor's success Mm. or promotion yes. or elevation or whatever the lord blesses that pastor with where you truly can celebrate because the kingdom wins well it goes back to what we said in the week pastor paul it's also important for us to know what we do not carry when we mm. know what we do not carry it's easier to celebrate another man mm. i think we keep coming back to this concept of kingdom mindedness yeah. because it's really about thinking broader than where you are at and saying that there are others out there they may not agree with everything i preach mm-hmm. they may not do the things that i do they may not see the world in the way that i do but yet we are pushing towards one agenda but mark i like the word you use this agreement pastors that are mature know how to debate around certain mm. issues that are not the fundamentals of our faith Absolutely. but can leave there and feel encouraged and inspired you know listeners uh, the pastors in the studio along with pastor leon are good friends we get together on a regular basis and we have debates. tremendous debates <laughs> we don't agree on everything yes. but that doesn't make us enemies that makes us better friends yes. pastor paul it takes maturity to sustain the relationship mm. at the end of the day when we can look past our differences and try and sustain the relationship we are able to go to the next level awesome thank you pastors well listeners you've been listening to the emerging voice pastor brandon bailey pastor paul gonzalves and pastor marco jacobs we've been blessed to be with you and we trust that you've had an awesome time with us tonight god bless you and see you next week we trust that you've enjoyed this broadcast the emerging voice